a context and an overview of uh, measuring uh, the outcomes, the employment outcomes around uh, mobility uh, today. Um, over the past four decades, the social policy field has been transitioning into the information age. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about where we started. Uh, surveys, paper and pencils, and going moving on to administrative data. Uh, initially, there was a big focus on sur survey data. When I was doing my dissertation, everybody was doing surveys. And there was also a focus on data for policymakers. Now it's changed. There's more of a focus on evidence building and data governance, as people have realized the, the challenges around doing that. There's more data to improve programmatic and case level decision making. The new focus on predictive analytics. Uh, is an example of that. Um, both the promise and the challenge of that is something I'll touch on a little bit today. And we're beginning to see more uh, integrated data. Uh, it's been gradual, uh, increasing over the past three or four decades. Uh, and we'll be able to see the benefits of integrated data right now. I also want to talk a little bit about where I think we're going. I think there's a big challenge around improving access to the data where we need to measure um, economic mobility. Data has to be institutionalized. Uh, right now, um, the issue of silos is, is really upon us. Data are uh, fragmented across many different places, and they're not brought into uh, together into one place. Um, and it's just uh, most of us are playing are spending a lot of time just bringing data together uh, so that we can uh, finally do the analysis we need to do. We need to share data sets across states and at the federal level. Many issues. The states are the primary collectors of a lot of these data, um, but there's also mobility across states. Uh, so bringing data together uh, nationally or across multiple states is very important. Also, we need richer data. We want to link individuals from cradle to grave, and we want to link data across family members. Economic mobility is really an issue at the family level, uh, at the household level. Uh, individual members of families bring resources together to achieve economic mobility and address the needs of the families, uh, members of those families. We also have a great opportunity to make the data richer through the use of text. Uh, workers and state agencies right now are collecting case notes on many of the cases they're uh, dealing with. And it's really a resource uh, for a lot of the issues that we need. Finally, we have to really improve our communications with policymakers. Uh, the predictive analytics is interesting because uh, it's hard to explain what predictive analytics are to a policymaker who has a you know, research background. And until they understand and trust what we're doing, I don't think policymakers are really going to be using the data, um, information we develop to inform their uh, decision making. So I just want to talk quickly about what we're measuring, what we're talking about when we're talking uh, economic mobility, family self-sufficiency, well-being, uh, and adversity. Uh, the outcomes are relatively clear. We're interested in employment. We're interested in issues of earnings. We're issues in issues of wage, wage uh, progression and employment stability. Uh, but we're also interested in issues that support economic mobility, programs that support economic mobility, and barriers uh, to economic mobility. mobility. Uh, we're very concerned about issues of uh, level of employment and benefit cliffs. Um, so we're really uh, trying to get precise measures of employment so we can understand what the impact is of policy on the well-being uh, and employment um, of families. The other, the other list here uh, are issues such supports and um, barriers. Uh, that I'll talk about a little bit more uh, along the way. Child care and work support utilization is important to understand. Educational achievement is a way to uh, reduce intergenerational poverty. Family stability and birth outcomes are also impact, impact economic uh, mobility. And then there are more severe, uh, serious issues such as um, child maltreatment, domestic violence, criminal ju juvenile justice, and uh, healthcare needs that impact us. So these are all uh, topics that are important uh, for economic ability and 
data we have to bring together to really have a comprehensive understanding of that. So in the 80s, as I mentioned, you know, when I started, uh, workers were using three by five cards to track their caseloads. And with the electronic systems for paying bills for providing um, benefits to families, be it AFDC at the time or food stamps were, were slowly being developed. Researchers have done very little with administrative data and it was really looked upon as very inadequate. Those of us who were using it were really seen as a black sheep. Um, most social programs, uh, still use social social surveys or collected data on hundreds of cases and would have had a rich qualitative component, which is something I believe we've lost. Um, trans, transcriptions from um, paper files was a, was a major tool. Computing was very expensive uh, and we worked on mainframes. But some of the ideas that uh, were still uh, are very active today started at this time. Bain and Elwood helped us understand spells we moved towards working with entry cohorts instead of having all our uh, analyses be point in time. We started thinking about relational databases and how to structure data, and we were beginning to do record linkage that would prepare us for integrated data. And during the 80s, ASPE and Children's Bureau funded the first work on using on developing administrative data to understand child welfare better. In the 90s, we began to uh, see leader studies around welfare reform. Um, this was a way to begin to integrate administrative data if it was just a link to survey data. Um, we saw the beginning of integrated data in South Carolina, in Illinois and Wisconsin. Uh, Washington State began building their integrated data to address welfare reform in the 90s. Um, and we started to do multi-state studies. The importance of this is that we built comparable data across states so we could compare what was happening to individuals and families across states. There's a link at the bottom, uh, which you'll get when you can access the slides to a nice study that uh, Wisconsin IRP did uh, around uh, levers. Um, uh, the second link there is a report uh, that um, I was part of um, in the late 90s. Um, HHS funded the Joint Poverty Research Center at, North at Northwestern University in the University of Chicago. And the advisory panel on research uses of administrative data put out a set of recommendations that still today pop up uh, in many reports and many discussions. Uh, I'm not gonna read all of this, uh, but this, the highlighted sections speak to a centralized and ongoing repository of information on administrative data. Secondly, a partnerships with independent research organizations, such as those universities, to help develop and use administrative data bases on an ongoing basis. Some of the questions we're still looking at are uh, down below. What mechanisms and procedures should be adopted that will provide access of these data to responsible researchers while still safeguarding the privacy of individuals? What guidance can be provided for crafting interagency agreements? What are the proper disclosure standards for these databases when reporting on results from research based on these data. So you can see uh, almost 25 years later, uh, a lot of the issues have not changed uh, very much. And we're also also still interested in um, uh, data quality issues, uh, an ongoing uh, challenge uh, for many of us. So all this background uh, that happened in the last century uh, really speaks to the data uh, that we uh, need to address, need to bring together to address better measurement of economic develop, um, economic mobility uh, and family self-sufficiency. In the 21st century, uh, there's been more of a focus on employment and earnings. In part, this is due to welfare reform, uh, where we moved away from cash assistance uh, and made work uh, for low-income families a, a priority. Uh, so we're still actively working on better measures, uh, a set of measures that indicate progress um, in a multidimensional way towards self-sufficiency and economic mobility, better, uh, increased economic mobility. And we're working towards evidence around short and long-term effectiveness of social programs. The pandemic, I think, has put a, um, has changed our focus um, you know, in a, in a good economy, we're, we're hopeful that 
low-income families can uh, have wage progression and move up, uh, increase their earnings. Um, in, an, in a recession that we're in now, uh, we focus on uh, employment, uh, sorry, uh, TANF and SNAP uh, take up. Um, so we're very much obviously interested in different things uh, during different economic environments uh, as we try to uh, achieve uh, improvement for uh, low-income people. Right now, uh, the weekly news is all, always about unemployment insurance benefits, how many people are applying. Uh, in the last recession, we saw that a lot of these individuals who exhausted their UI benefits eventually took up SNAP uh, at the time. Uh, so while we haven't seen a large increase in SNAP the way we, uh, that we saw in the previous recession, we can see, uh, we can potentially see that too. We now have an excellent resource because of welfare reform. Um, the National Directory of New Hires uh, is an excellent resource for research. Now, we, right now, we're limited to using math for TANF and child support uh, by by legislation. Um, but uh, it's brought, it brings together a number of uh, important data sets that allow us to more comprehensively understand economic mobility for for families uh, and individuals uh, and a uh, greater use of that uh, NDNH data uh, would be a big boom for uh, measuring economic um, mobility. As I mentioned earlier, a big focus um, on developing better data uh, and data sets is at the state level. Um, nearly all administrative data that we're talking about today are collected by states, in some cases counties. Um, so one effort uh, that has been begun uh, by OFA, Office of Family Assistance, and the Office of Planning Research and Evaluation in ACS is the TANF Data uh, Collaborative, an initiative of ACS TANF Data, TANF data Innovation Project uh, launched in 2017 to accelerate the use of TANF administrative data for program improvement and evidence building at the federal, state, and local level of data. NDRC is leading uh, the contract for this project. Uh, Chapin Hall, the Coleridge Initiative, and uh, uh, External Intelligence for Social Policy are, are partners in this work. Uh, we're serving TANF agencies through targeted uh, training and technical assistance that are available to all TANF agencies and stakeholders. You can see the um, website uh, URL there for interested in more information about that. And we're also working with pilots, uh, selected states, uh, to go deeper into their um, use of data to address specific uh, issues uh, in TANIS. This work was informed by a comprehensive national needs assessment. Uh, TDC partners would select the states to enhance their capacity to improve policy program management and frontline practice in order to improve employment and well-being outcomes, uh, sorry, outcomes for individual families. This, this needs assessment uh, was a very important for us deciding how we were going to um, target our resources to help states better develop uh, indicators around uh, economic mobility, employment, and employment. Um, we learned a couple of important, important things from this that I'd like to share. Um, states are actively de developing their data assets. Uh, they have many, as I said, they're collecting uh, uh, all the data that we've been talking about today. Uh, and their workers spend a lot of time, and they're actually using this data for reporting. We've, we've learned that from our uh, survey where we had a really very uh, high response rate. There is progress on integrated data. Um, certainly many states integrate uh, the data that is under their uh, rooftop, um, but it's sporadic, uh, especially uh, linking to a wide range of data, and there's not uh, uh, re um, regular reporting on what they're learning. There's also some success linking with employment data, uh, although there's still challenges around accessing it in many states. There are capacity issues. Uh, around doing complex analysis and evaluation. That's still, uh, most states still use external researchers 
uh, or research organizations uh, to do that work. Although there we found that there, states report that there are challenges uh, in partnering uh, with external uh, researchers. Um, so the implications of our needs assessment, um, which is certainly true for TANF, but I believe true for all social programs, uh, that we really need to improve access uh, to data. Um, until we prove that, improve that access, we won't have the measures of economic mobility and family self-sufficiency uh, that, uh, in, that uh, leaders at all levels uh, need to make better decisions uh, for families. There needs to be an emphasis on data quality and uh, metadata or documentation. Um, it really is a forgotten area uh, in state government. Um, uh, and those of us who uh, really understand the issues uh, around data quality and the challenges around data quality, uh, I think have to make it clear uh, why it's important to improve that data quality. We need to develop best practices for effective partnerships with external uh, researchers. Um, uh, this primarily, uh, there need to be better. There needs to be better trust uh, of external uh, partners um, that they're not just in it to uh, write papers um, that uh, are uh, often published in journals that um, aren't accessible to state policymakers. Uh, so it goes back to the issue of us being able to communicate better with policymakers around what we do and why uh, it's important. There need to be incentives to disseminate and share state level analyses as much as what is done in the states is never made public. Um, so at states, we found that states are doing a lot, uh, but that it's not really available. Uh, and that um, it, some of that, uh, I believe that some of that saw the light of day, we, we understand a lot more about the challenges and what states are accomplishing. Uh, with their data. So in the near future, um, we have this, we have the context, this context. We now have the Commission on Evidence-Based Policy Making Report and the Evans Act and the Federal data, Strat data Strategy. That's going to change how federal agencies operate and how they deal with their data. OPRE in particular has taken it seriously uh, from actually for many years as, any, as much as any federal agency, any statistical agency. Uh, the creation of the Division of Data Improvement uh, reflects uh, this. Uh, data science is only beginning to be visible in social program research and analysis, not just machine learning, but other things from the production of metadata, better documentation around data security, data modeling, open source code. As I said earlier, text data is going to be important uh, to satisfy the needs uh, for richer data. So really taking advantage of all the developments uh, in the field of data science is necessary for us to accomplish the goals of better, better measures. I believe that data on all family members needed to understand multi-system families better or the issues of economic mobility. We need to be clear about what that means. There are challenges because families aren't static, uh, things change, um, and, and mostly many systems collect data on individuals and not on groups. SNAP is, the, um, is one where we do know all the members of the household. Uh, so it's a real challenge bringing together data from systems and, and wage data is one of these, UI wage data is one of, where we don't really know a lot about uh, anything about family members of an individual uh, who has earnings. And finally, I think building capacity uh, in or for state public agencies to support data curation, data analysis, and data use uh, is important, whether that capacity is internal or external government states really need um, to improve their capacity, uh, not only to address what uh, we're talking about relative to measures of economic mobility, but also to improve, ser but mostly, mostly to improve services uh, to the families uh, that they serve. Thank you.